The following training segment is for agencies with kitchens used for food preparation. Agencies preparing meals for clients need to take additional food safety precautions to avoid the spread of foodborne illness. The clients we serve are often some of the most vulnerable to foodborne illness. Additionally, donated food, because it has been handled multiple times and is often close to outdating, requires extra care. When working in the kitchen, it is important to practice all of the hygiene techniques that we learned in the first part of this video. These practices include proper hand washing technique, proper glove use and hand care, use of hair restraints and aprons. In addition to keeping good personal hygiene, kitchen workers need to be aware of the kinds of foods and conditions that can cause the growth of bacteria and other germs and lead to foodborne illness. Although any kind of food can become contaminated, the kinds of food most likely to become unsafe are called potentially hazardous foods. These foods have a natural potential for contamination due to the way they are produced and processed. They typically contain moisture or protein, have a neutral or slightly acidic pH, and require time temperature control. These foods include meat, such as beef, pork, and lamb, poultry, such as chicken and turkey, fish, shellfish, meat alternatives, such as textured soy protein and tofu, milk and dairy products, eggs, raw sprouts and sprout seeds, cooked grains, beans, and vegetables, including potatoes, sliced melons, and untreated garlic in oil. Receiving. Let's follow the food through the kitchen and learn how to keep it safe. You might remember some of these practices from earlier in the video. You want to make sure to only bring food into your kitchen that is safe to use. Make sure that perishable foods have been transported at proper temperatures, either in a refrigerated vehicle or using coolers or insulated blankets. Store perishable foods in the fridge or freezer right away when you receive them. If you receive prepared foods from a restaurant or institution, Check their temperature to make sure they have either been held at or above the proper hot holding temperature, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, or that they've been cooled and held below 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Controlling the temperature of foods is an important way to keep food safe. The key is to always keep foods out of the temperature danger zone, or TDZ. TDZ is the range between 41 degrees and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, within which germs and bacteria grow rapidly. Thermometers are an important tool used to keep food safe and out of the TDZ. You will need several different kinds in your kitchen. Thermometers should be kept and monitored frequently in refrigerators and freezers. Equipment such as ovens or dishwashers also require working thermometers. Most importantly, you will need thermometers to measure the temperature of food. Bimetallic stemmed thermometers are the most common and must be calibrated in order to consistently give accurate readings. The easiest, most common way to calibrate a thermometer is called the ice point method. Here's how it works. Fill a large container with ice and add clean tap water until the container is full. Put the thermometer stem into the ice water so the sensing area is completely submerged. Wait 30 seconds or until the indicator stops moving. Do not let the stem touch the container's bottom or sides. Hold the calibration nut securely with a wrench or other tool and rotate the head of the thermometer until it reads 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, each of these types of thermometers have a specific purpose and should be used only for that purpose. Bimetallic stemmed thermometers should not, for example, be used in an oven or freezer. Storage. Once you take food into inventory, it is important to store it safely. Make sure that fridges and freezers are holding proper temperatures, between 33 and 41 degrees for fridges, and at or below zero for freezers, by recording temperatures on a log at least daily. Rotate stock to ensure that the oldest products are used first, F-I-F-O. Label and date all leftovers and discard after seven days. Wrap food properly to avoid cross-contamination. Store raw meat, poultry, and fish below ready-to-eat foods, such as salads or fruit, in the refrigerator to avoid cross-contamination. 
Keep fridges and freezers closed as much as possible so that they hold proper temperatures. Keep storage areas clean. Food preparation. When preparing food that has been frozen, it is important to thaw the food properly. There are four acceptable methods for thawing frozen food. First, in the refrigerator at 41 degrees or lower, submerged under cool, potable running water at 70 degrees or lower, in a microwave if the food will be cooked immediately after thawing, or as part of the cooking process. When preparing raw or ready-to-eat foods, you want to avoid cross-contamination. Cross-contamination is the transfer of germs or bacteria from one food or surface to another. Germs can move around easily. They can be transferred from food or unwashed hands to prep areas, equipment, utensils, cutting boards, or other food. Here are some common ways that cross-contamination can happen in your kitchen. Try to avoid these situations. Adding contaminated ingredients to food that receives no further cooking, such as dressing on potato or macaroni salad. Allowing cooked or ready-to-eat food to touch surfaces that have not been cleaned and sanitized. Allowing contaminated food or raw meats to touch or drip fluids onto cooked or ready-to-eat food. Food handlers touching contaminated food and then touching cooked or ready-to-eat food without hand washing and or changing gloves. Using contaminated cloths on different food contact surfaces without cleaning and sanitizing them in between. The best way to prevent cross-contamination is to create barriers, either physical or procedural, between different kinds of food. Here's a best practice for avoiding cross-contamination. Assign different sets of equipment, utensils, cutting boards, containers, etc., to different categories of food, such as poultry, fish, meat, produce. Many agencies color code cutting boards and containers to remind workers. For example, blue for poultry, red for beef, green for produce, etc. The only way to reduce germs and bacteria in food to safe levels is to cook the food to a safe internal temperature. Cooking temperatures vary from food to food. Here are internal cooking temperatures for some common foods. 165 degrees for poultry or previously cooked foods, like leftovers. 155 degrees for ground meat and eggs that will be held for service. 145 degrees for beef, pork, veal, and lamb, not ground, and for fish and eggs. 135 degrees for fruits or vegetables to be held for hot service and for commercially processed ready-to-eat food, like cheese sticks, deep-fried vegetables, etc. Cooling and reheating. When cooked food is not going to be served right away, it is important to hold it at proper temperature or cool it as quickly as possible. Food must be cooled from 140 degrees to 70 degrees within two hours, and then from 70 degrees to 41 degrees or lower in the next four hours. This may seem like a long time, but you might be surprised at how long it can take a large quantity of cooked food to cool. In order to speed the cooling process, here are some methods you should try. Reduce the size. Cut large food items into smaller pieces and divide large containers of food into smaller containers or shallow pans to increase surface area. Soups, stews, and chili should not be more than two inches deep. Place food in an ice water bath. Stir the food frequently to cool it faster and more evenly. Add ice or cold water as an ingredient. To do this, you would prepare the recipe with less water than required and then add cold water or ice after cooking to cool the product. Never place large quantities of hot food directly into the fridge or freezer to cool immediately after cooking. Try one or several of the techniques mentioned first. Most fridges or freezers are not designed to cool food quickly enough. You also risk raising the temperature of other foods in the fridge or freezer into the TDZ, the temperature danger zone. You shouldn't stack hotel pans with cooling food on top of one another in the fridge or tightly cover food containers. This can trap heat and keep air from circulating properly around the food. Reheating. Steam tables are meant to hold food, not cook it. When holding hot food for service in chafing dishes or a steam table, 
make sure the food is first heated to the proper internal temperature, 165 degrees for leftovers. Hot food must be held at an internal temperature of 140 degrees or higher. Hi, I'm Leslie Sampson, Director of Agency Relations at Oregon Food Bank. Thank you so much for spending time with us today to learn a little bit more about food safety. If you have any questions now or in the future about food safety, we hope you'll contact your regional food bank to learn more. Most importantly, on behalf of the Oregon Food Bank Network, I want to thank you for all that you do for those living on low incomes in your communities. The Oregon Food Bank Network would not exist without the dedication of staff and volunteers like you throughout Oregon and Southwest Washington. At Oregon Food Bank, we're committed to providing food to people in need and doing so in a way that allows them to maintain their dignity and gives them hope. As you know, when a client reaches your door, they may be feeling frustrated or frightened. They may be feeling stressed for having to ask for help in the first place. That's why it's so important that we treat each client with trust and respect. That same trust and respect that we would ask for if we were in their shoes. Every one of our clients deserves to be treated with compassion and to feel supported in their time of need. When we create this kind of experience, we take an important step toward ending hunger by empowering the people that we serve.